And there you go, a GPU clock speed of 2085. Yeah, the game has now crashed, actually, as I was saying that. You know, I hate to say it, but maybe you should be looking at a bigger triple slot card. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one I'm really excited for. Here we have the RTX 3070 Twin Edge. A graphics card that should outperform the Founders Edition fairly comfortably, but actually cost roughly about the same. Which in some ways is a little bit worrying, because actually I think this is the best Founders Edition card I've ever seen. Because it runs so cool, so quiet, no coil wine, and it actually looks really good as well. The only problem, as we discussed in our last video, and you can check this out in the top right corner of your screen, is that if you do decide to put a Founders Edition in a small ITX chassis that doesn't have good ventilation or airflow, then you'll run into a problem where this card is basically blowing air into nothing and you not necessarily get overheating, but you don't get the full performance and lower acoustics that you'd want to get from this card. So something like this should make more sense. You don't get the horrible alien thing as well. Bad. Right, it is time to get amplified and read some documentation. 100%, we all do that. But actually, inside our little box, we have the card itself. And here we go then. And actually this is a little bit bigger than I thought, not in terms of length, but actually in height. You can see that to keep this two slot dimensions, they've had to make the card a little bit taller. And I think this is just actually to give it better acoustic performance. But it looks quite funny when you look at it from the back actually, because you have these power connections that are way down here. But that actually will give you the benefit of being able to hide the power connections so that you should get a really nice clean finish. And that's probably actually the way I would describe the whole card. It, it's very clean, it's not particularly shouty, it's got this nice sort of slate grey effect to it. Only two fans, but this is going to mean it will fit in more cases. Along the top you've got this Zotac Gaming logo, GeForce RTX logo that apparently you need on every single card. There is a nice backplate on this one actually, there's a few cutouts and I don't think this is for ventilation purposes, this is more just to give it a little bit more styling I guess, and it looks pretty good. And then on the back IO of the card, importantly we have three DisplayPort 1.4s and then a HDMI 2.1, and this is going to be very useful for 4 K120, but you will need to have a very modern screen set up to actually be able to utilize this. Nothing else in the box to report really, other than some 8-pin to two 6-pin converters. I don't think many people would need them, but I guess they're nice to have if you're in a pinch. But, as for our little comparison, here we have the Twin Edge, here we have the Founders Edition, and you can see actually, in terms of footprint, there's not really that much between them, because this is a little bit longer, but then this is actually much taller. You can see depending on the chassis you're going to go for, actually there's quite a few cases that this wouldn't fit in, but this would. We're talking small, of course. I think both of these would fit in any normal size chassis without any issue whatsoever. Let me know down in the comment section below which one you prefer and whether you'd want the sort of airflow optimization that you get with something like this, or whether you prefer the traditional approach. As always, you can see this full PC build that we did do with a, what was it, an RTX 3070 actually, the Founders Edition, in the top right corner of your screen. I tell you what, that looks really good actually. They seem to have nailed this whole, not gamery design, but I like how you've got a little bit of flair on it, but then the rest of it can just sort of ooze away into the rest of your PC. It is a, it's a little bit more difficult to actually put two of these eight pins in though, with this tall design, especially with this cooler above it. That's a, uh, that's a bit annoying. Fire this bad boy up. I reckon there's no RGB on this card at all actually. This looks like a white logo. This is a first. This is Zotac taking a stand and saying no. Vote no to RGB. One short transition later, and here we are in Horizon Zero Dawn, a game I know very well on the 3080 as I have been playing through it. Performance seems to be pretty similar to the Founders Edition to be honest. I mean, we didn't expect to see any big difference I guess. Is there a slight overclock out of the box? I'm not sure if there is on this one, to be honest, because clock speed is at 1950, which is about the same as what we got on the Founders. So if you're expecting like a big boost right out of the box, then you're certainly not gonna get it. Remember, of course, that there are two versions of this graphics card. You can get the overclocked edition and the standard. But if you're debating which one to go for, if you are gonna get this card or any third party, then the choice you have to make is pretty much as to whether you're happy to adjust those sliders, because if you are, then you just save yourself the money and get the standard clocked card because it's otherwise exactly the same. 
but if you really don't want to mess about with menus or don't want to risk your warranty, I guess is what a lot of people would be worried about, then yes, it probably is worth getting the pre-overclocked edition. But even then, as you can see, the performance difference isn't really that much versus this and the RTX 3070 founders. Let's get a little bit scientific though, and here are the hard benchmark numbers for the Zotac Twin Edge. And this is the stock clocked card, so it's not overclocked out of the box or done by myself, but it's still not actually quite as fast as the Founders Edition, which is a little bit interesting to me. In fact, it's, it's really interesting to me because obviously this card is more expensive than the Founders, yet it doesn't perform quite so well. And obviously you can overclock it manually, but you can also do that with the Founders Edition. So it's a little bit disappointing to be honest. Obviously, if you can get this card for a little bit less than the Founders, then this really wouldn't be a problem because it's not like there's a big difference between the two cards. But a difference there is, and at the moment, if you're paying more and getting less, it doesn't really make that much sense for the Zotac now, does it? Let's move on though and actually talk about something that a lot of you are probably going to find a lot more important and should impact your buying decision if you're choosing between 3070s, and that is actually its acoustic and thermal performance with that cooler. And unfortunately, this week I have the absolutely dreadful job yes, that is a Bake Off reference of just telling you that this card runs louder than the Zotac card at the same temperature. And this is best case scenario. Look how open this case is. I've got the side panel off and then just listen to the noise. I mean, to be clear, it's not really a problem. It's very easy to drone out. It's not one of these horrible whining graphics cards that I've used before, especially compare it to like a gaming laptop or something. But obviously we're comparing it against the Founders Edition, which arguably will be very similar price, maybe not in terms of availability, but you know, I hate to say it, but maybe you should be looking at a bigger triple slot card if you are going for an RTX 3070 third party. And that's not something I thought I would be saying. I, I just assumed that because the Founders Edition handled heat and noise so well, it didn't need a big cooling solution, but maybe Nvidia just nailed it this year. But anyway, pressing on to overclocking, here's Firestorm, which is not my favorite software out there, but I mean, it's fine. Uh, let's increase the power to 109%. And then the GPU clock, we actually got, I think it was 112 on the Founders Edition before we started to run into problems. So let's jump in straight to where we left off. And there you go, a GPU clock speed of 2085, 2100, let's just change to there. Yeah, the game has now crashed actually, as I was saying that. Whoops. So I thought we'd change games. Here is Far Cry 5, and I know that this is actually very good for overclocking, but we're actually now running at plus 100 on the GPU clock and plus 50 on the memory. And this is a little bit below what I had the Founders Edition at. It's very difficult to say exactly what you will be able to get on your card if you do decide to overclock. But so far anyway, this seems stable enough. So I reckon if you're expecting anywhere between plus 75, plus 100, it is gonna depend on the game. Some games you won't be able to overclock at all. It's a fairly reasonable estimate, but as I say, it's on a case by case basis. So in terms of its overclocking performance, then it's, it's pretty similar to the Founders Edition, to be honest. But for whatever reason, my card didn't quite get as close, but I mean, we're talking 10 megahertz here, so really not something to concern yourself with. Whether there is an internal design change that has made it not quite as good, or whether it's purely just the binning of the chip, we will never know, so please don't base your decision on this. So the only real question I have remaining is whether it will fit into a small form factor chassis, because if it doesn't do that, then it would be quite difficult to recommend, I think, to be honest with you. I mean, to be fair, it is pretty small. As I say, it's, it's dual slot. We didn't used to say that about dual slot cards, especially ones that are this size, but in today's money, it's pretty small. Moment of truth then, will this fit in? My money's on yes, to be honest with you, but I've been wrong about these things before. It does fit in. I knew that there'd be a reason to pick up this graphics card, and clearly size slash form factor is one of them. So as long as you're bearing in mind that extra bit of height, I think this could be quite useful for some more unique chassis, shall we say. But realistically, my conclusion is this. I'm not really that impressed with this graphics card. The 3070 is an amazing graphics card, but in particular, what Zotac have done here isn't really gonna make a lot of sense to a lot of people unless you're in one of three scenarios. The first one is if you need something for a particular chassis and it's gonna fit, then it makes perfect sense. The second, and I suppose the third, is all about pricing and availability because 
right now on the pricing and availability information that I have, it doesn't make sense to pick this up. But if that changes and you can pick this up and you can't get the founders anymore, or maybe this is cheaper than the founders, then you'd be getting a very good deal because yeah, it is a bit louder, but not so much so that I think you'd regret buying it. Maybe you're watching this in a year and this is a little bit less, maybe a lot less than the founders, go for it. If you're watching this now, when this video comes out, don't go for it. Pretty much as simple as that. I'd love to hear your feedback though. If you like the design of this card, the size, or you think you should go for something completely different, then I'd love to hear from you. Let me know down in that comment section below. If you do want to learn a little bit more about current pricing on this graphics card or anything else featured in this video, then you can find it all listed down below with my Amazon affiliate links. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed it. It really helps out, you honestly wouldn't believe. And if you like these videos, getting subscribed would be absolutely amazing. You can find that button listed down below. But thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.